How are you? Good, good. I, um, we have had such a good time this morning in worship and loving on each other. I'm about to ruin that. I'm going to ruin it with one word. Politics. Right? Well, I want to talk to you over the next two weeks about politics, our politics. And I believe what the Lord wants us to know as we draw closer to, to the beginning of November and what we're going to be facing. So today, I want to talk to you about peace. Peace. Do you think it's possible for, for believers to have peace in a time where our, our country and literally the world is so filled with anxiety. I was actually stunned when I was in India a couple weeks ago and I was sitting with friends of mine and, and they, had, they had this troubled look on their face as they were describing what was going to happen to the world if this particular person got into office. It was heavier for them than it was for some Americans because of all of the ramifications of what the most powerful country in the world was going to do, the, the course that it was going to walk in, and what's going to happen in the rest of the world. Our world is afraid. It's not just us. So, so we, have, we have this anxiety, right? We, we all have this anxiety. At least some of us have this anxiety about, oh, no, what's, what's going to happen to, to our future? And as I look at our candidates, and I'll speak for me, as I look at our candidates, to me, they are exactly the same. They're the same. They have different worldviews, but inside they're the same. The only difference between the two besides the worldview is, is one of our candidates flaunts the poor character and the other one hides the poor character. That's it. That's it. And we're, we're left, and listen, that's not, I'm not digging on our candidates. I don't believe in that. What I'm saying is truth. It's truth. And it leaves us, those who love the Lord Jesus, we're left with, with what then do we do? How do I vote? Do I vote? Do, what, what, what platform should I do? We, we're left with this anxious decision on how to move forward. This is so far beyond Republican or Democrat or Independent. This is going to the character of, of who we are is represented here by these two. And I want to suggest to you that God has a message for you over these next two weeks. Next week is very practical. Here's what you need to do to keep the mind of Christ over the next week. That's next week. Today, God wants you to know that he is at perfect peace. Jesus is at perfect peace. And he's simply inviting you to step into his peace, not this world's peace. So I want to break open the word with you this morning, and I hope that when you leave here, you're going to have an extra three layers of skin when you turn on the TV and you start watching the bombs being lobbed back and forth. And it's only going to get worse over the next week and a half. You just have to know that. You probably do know that. So let me do this. Let's, let's open the word together. I want you to turn to Mac, Mark chapter 4, and then after we read scripture, we're going to pray together. Mark chapter 4. We're going to talk about peace inside of a storm. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? 
Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let's pray together. Father, we, we are in the midst of a storm, a political storm. And Lord, there are many, not just in our country, but in the world, who, who wonder if, if whatever happens in a week and a half is, is the changing of the world, and there's no, there's no point of return, there's no, there's no coming back or recovering from what's about to happen. We, Lord, we, we don't know. But we're in the midst of a storm. We're in a boat and the wind is blowing and the waves are coming in and the boat is sinking. Lord, we need to know that that Jesus is with us. And we, we need to glean from Jesus, Father, the peace that he has, the, the, the kind of peace that he can sleep in the midst of of a storm, the kind of peace that, that, uh, that, that, Lord, he has the power to speak into a storm, and it goes away. God, would you give us that kind of peace? We're hungry for that peace. Let us not be drawn into and, and have our eyes turned from, the, from the, the, the peace that's ours to the storm. Lord, let us not focus on the storm. But let us focus upon Jesus Christ, our peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's talk about the scene at the Sea of Galilee. So, so here's what's happening. The, 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 the disciples were in the boat. Jesus had told them, hey, we're going to the other side. So they get in the boat and they're rowing. There's some boats. I think some of the boats turned back. So it was just them now on the water. They're, they're going across, right? And little did they know that the storm, they didn't know that the storm was coming. They just got out on the water and the storm is there. So we're, we're in the midst. Uh, here's the disciples thinking, this was an awesome ministry day. I mean, Jesus is teaching parables. People are finding out who Jesus is. He might have been doing some miracles. This is a great ministry day. We're going to get in the boat, go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and, and we're, we're going to do some stuff over there. So they get in the boat. It's been a good ministry day. All of a sudden, ministry, ministry, okay, so, so God's pouring into us through Jesus, and, and we're, we're, we're along with Jesus, and we're, we're looking at the crowds. We're breaking the crowds up into 50s and 100s, and we're doing everything Jesus said. So all of a sudden, ministry takes a turn. So now, instead of thinking about where we're going, the disciples are now thinking, are we going to survive are we going to make it past the next five or ten minutes? Because this, this is a survival situation. Does that sound at all familiar to you? It does sound very familiar to me. Little did they know that ministry was actually happening, but the ministry wasn't to go from them and out. The ministry here is to them. They're about to learn this lesson of peace. Peace. Like they've never learned before. So here's what happens. The storm comes up. And, and you can almost imagine the disciples here for a second. Because uh, you know, they, they know Jesus is sleeping in the stern. He's in the back of the boat. He's on a cushion. He's sleeping. And the winds start blowing. Prior to the wind, they're probably telling jokes. They're probably talking about what they're going to do when they get across. They're probably poking fun at each other. They're probably tired. Maybe they're silent, but they're going. And all of a sudden, the wind starts blowing, and the waves start cresting over the side of the boat. The Bible says the boat's filling up with water. So now, they're, they're, I wonder how many times the disciples look back at Jesus. Well, I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, isn't that what we do in our storms? Hey, I'm paddling. I'm bailing. Jesus, where are you? And it gets to the point where one of them, I don't know which one, he gets up and he, what's he do? He goes and he wakes up Jesus and these words, these words, don't you care? 
Don't you care? Have you ever got that place in a storm? I think it's so beautiful that Jesus allows the disciples to get to that place. And he, he has the conversation that all of us have in our hearts, except he has it out loud with his disciples. When we look at our political system, I mean, there has been a tremendous amount of prayer over the last year. Churches all across the United States, and there are countries praying for the United States. Do you realize that? Countries praying for the United States because this is such a pivotal election. And has our country experienced the repentance that we've been crying out for? Even in this year, 2016, we've had sacred assemblies here in this house where we stopped our service for a Sunday. And as a congregation, we cry out to God, God, bring repentance to the United States of America. And we haven't experienced repentance as a matter of fact, what we have is a country that is polarized and caught up in the foray of, of a battle. It's the most intense political battle I have ever seen in my life. It, it's not repentance. We are focused on our solutions to the problems at hand, believing that these two poor charactered individuals actually stand a chance at turning our country around. They don't. But we are in the boat with Jesus. And that's all you need. Listen, as we go further in this story, there's a tension. There's a tension, and I think you're probably feeling it, right? There's a tension. And the disciples felt a tension, and that was on one hand, there's a storm in front of them, and there's Jesus behind them. And that's the same kind of tension we feel. We see a storm in front of us. What does it mean? What does it represent? Well, we don't know, but we're going to find out, I assure you that. But we know that Jesus is behind us. He's in all of this. But here's the thing. Just like in the story... Jesus was asleep on a cushion in the boat. Jesus, you haven't changed our country. When the disciples went to Jesus, I really want you to get this. When the disciples went to Jesus and they woke him up, what were they really asking Jesus to do? Think about it. It, to me, it's one of two things. Either there was an extra paddle laying in the boat, or there's an extra bucket laying in the boat. And they were literally saying, Jesus, we need your hand at getting the water out of the boat or getting us across to the other side. I want to tell you, Jesus does not bail water. If, if Jesus were to have bailed water, it would be him conceding to the fact that the boat could have sunk. And I promise you, if Jesus said, we're going to the other side, guess what? They're going to the other side. The disciples were afraid, they were anxious, they, they were worried because the waves were coming over. And just a few minutes ago, they were on land and they watched him do amazing, miraculous things. God of miracles! God of miracles! We just sang about that. There's, there's, uh, let's bring this back to us um, just briefly here. See, there's, there's two ways that you can look at Jesus in this story, the, the, the way that the disciples are and maybe the way that we are in our political situation. There's the act of Jesus. Jesus, bring repentance to the United States. Jesus, would you please save Hillary Clinton? Would you please save Donald Trump? Would you, would you turn their lives upside down? And that's a good prayer, and who knows? God can do anything, 
right? But see, Jesus, I know that you care if you're active. If you're active. If you're bailing water and rowing the boat, then I know you care. But there's a more powerful Jesus than an active Jesus, and it's the present Jesus. The Jesus who is present. The Jesus who, who he was never going to bail water. He was never going to row that boat, ever. You know why? Because at the end of that would have been disciples looking at him and go, you bailed more water than anybody I've ever seen. You paddled faster, Jesus. We got all of us together. We did it together. We beat the storm. What was the end game for Jesus in this Situation. What was it that, that he wanted to see that would produce peace inside of his disciples? Well, we find it in verse number 41. Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Did you know that the, the safest place on earth for those disciples was in that boat with Jesus. The safest place for you in this world is right before a political storm. Do you know why? Jesus is in it. He's in it. Every last piece of it he owns. You know what? I would even suggest to you, well, let me ask, let me ask the question, then I'll suggest we know that Jesus owned the end of that storm, right? He owned it. Why? He shut it down. Do you think he only, end, uh, he only owned the end of the storm, or do you think he owned the beginning of the storm? Do you think he owned the storm before it was a storm? Is it possible that he brought the storm to teach the disciples where their peace lies? Not in a Jesus who bails water, but in a Jesus who commands storms. These men were going to touch billions of people, us included, as time goes on. Do you think it was important to Jesus that these men know that peace exists in the storm and not how fast they can move, but who they trust? And I want to suggest to you, we can learn from a Jesus like that. And we can learn from disciples like that when we say, Jesus, it's not how active you are, it's that you're present. See, here's the thing. There is surety in what Jesus says. And at the beginning, what did Jesus say? Not, hey guys, I'm going to the other side, I hope you make it. <laughs> what did he say? Let us go to the other side. And the disciples lost sight of that. The disciples lost sight of the fact that Jesus commanded at the beginning what the end is going to be. And that's why he said to them, why are you so afraid? Why is your faith the way that it is? I've already spoken with my mouth where we are going. Next week when we get together, I want to share with you where we're going. Where are we going? Can we trust the words of Jesus and where he's leading us? Absolutely we can. So we're going to look practically. Where are we going? And in that, you can have surety. Because listen to me. The surest and safest place on earth is where Jesus is present. Do me a favor. I want you to just close your eyes for a moment. I want you to imagine that you're one of the disciples for just a moment. Started out as a good trip, having a good time with your cohorts. We're paddling to the other side because Jesus said he wants to go over there, so we're going. And then the wind picks up, and it grows stronger and stronger. You pick up an oar. Or maybe you pick up a bucket. 
the water is starting to come in over the sides. And the Bible says that the boat was filling with water. In the midst of this rocky boat and water sloshing at your feet, you, you lay the oar down and you walk back and you see Jesus sound asleep. Can you picture him there? Laying on a mat, can you picture Jesus asleep? He's at perfect peace, perfect peace. in all the storms of your life, in the political storm that we're in, he's at perfect peace. You've got two options. Grab hold of his shoulder and shake it, and you can say, Jesus, Jesus, don't you care? I'm dying. would you say to him this morning you got this Jesus you've got this I trust you as long as I'm with you and you're with me I can be at perfect peace perfect peace hey friend if that's where you are would you let the peace of God fill you right now just let it come. Let it come. Open your heart to it right now. I receive the peace of Jesus Christ. Because this whole boat that I'm in, this whole boat that the United States is in, Jesus is present in it. And he commands the storm. Peace. Peace be still. Can you receive that? And while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I want to say to those of you who have never known the peace of Jesus Christ before, did you know that he can speak into your life and he can, he can bring peace where there has only been chaos all your life? And all you have to do is ask him, God of peace, will you come in and bring your peace into my life? Lord, I've made it a mess. It is chaotic as the day is long. And I'm asking you to bring the peace of Jesus Christ into my life. You can ask for that right now. Right now. And if you've just done that, we've got some people in the back who want to know your name. So on the way out, in just a minute, on the way out, if you would stop and say, you know what? I, I just accepted the peace of God into my life. Father, I thank you that the safest place on earth, whether there's a storm or no storm, is with you, Jesus. And I thank you that we are in the boat with you. And you have declared to the bride of Christ, we're going to the other side. So Lord, I pray that we wouldn't look to you to bail water. We would not look to you to, to paddle. We would not look to you to lend a hand to our personal fear. But Lord, we would know that you have spoken and we can be at peace because we are present with you. Our surety is with you. And at the end of the day, we will declare as the bride of Christ, who is this man who speaks at storms and makes them go away? God, may it be so that the name and the fame of Jesus Christ would be lifted by a body of Christ who walks in peace in the midst of political turmoil. Teach us how to do that, God. Let us not be swept away by our emotion and the filth that comes out of our mouth as we fall into the trap of this, this country and this world. But let us walk in peace. 
let us walk in peace, God. The peace of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Love you guys. Well, good. That was just for my own heart, I know. It is so true. We serve a God who gives us peace and we have confidence in him that we can walk through and know that he's got it. And so I just pray for each one of us and myself that we encounter somebody else this week that we can share that same peace with and so that they can have that assurance and hope as well. So if you are in need of prayer, and uh, we, I want to invite the elders and any of the staff that are here in the, in the service, if they could come forward and receive people for prayer, they count it a privilege to pray with you this morning. So God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Take care. You father the orphan, your kindness makes us whole, and you show sure